Numbers chapter 7, you have a Bible tonight, Numbers chapter 7, it's a real privilege to be in this pulpit. Numbers chapter 7, when we find it, we'll read just a few verses of scripture tonight. There's a bunch of preachers in one room, ain't it? Amen. <laughs> I thought it was uh, like impossible to get that many preachers in one room, but uh, your Bible says that they stuffed 50 in a cave, so I guess we're all right. <laughs> we're over 50, then it's, uh, I guess it's war. But Numbers chapter 7, <clears throat> that's about as good as it gets with my joke. So <laughs> Let's read the uh, beginning of verse 1. You can stretch if you want, and uh, let me stand. So go ahead and stand. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 7, verse 1, it came to pass on the day that Moses had fully set up the tabernacle and had anointed it and sanctified it and all the instruments thereof, both the altar and all the vessels thereof, and had anointed them and sanctified them, that the princes of Israel, heads of the house of their fathers, who were the princes of the tribes, were over them that were numbered offered. They brought their offerings before the Lord, six covered wagons and twelve oxen, a wagon for two of the princes, and for each of them an ox, for each one an ox, and they brought them before the tabernacle. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take it of them, that they may be to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, and thou shalt give them unto the Levites, to every man according to his service. And Moses took the wagons and the oxen and gave them unto the Levites. Two wagons and four oxen he gave unto the sons of Gershon according to their, to their service. And four wagons and eight oxen he gave unto the sons of Merari, according unto their service, under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron the priest. But unto the sons of Kohath he gave none, because the service of the sanctuary belonging unto them was that they should bear upon their shoulders. Thank you. you may be seated. Since we already prayed, we'll just jump right into it. What you see is you see the three sons of Aaron here, and they have a ministry. They have a service that they're supposed to do. And we've been talking so far about preaching, not a lot of talking, but mostly preaching, rattling all my windows, but preaching about faithful service. <clears throat> and I would guess tonight that everyone here is serving the Lord, possibly in some capacity. And I don't think for one minute that if you're here tonight, you're serving the Lord, you're, I don't think you're that individual that is just kind of doing it half in and half out. I know Bible believers, and most Bible believers that I know, it's like all or nothing. It's, you've got to, whatever you're dealt, you play it all. That, that's really good. And, uh, and so I believe for the most part, and you, you might have somebody fooled, or you might have your preacher fooled, or me fooled, that's easy to do, but I believe for the most part you're all in. And I believe we ought to all be in for Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Amen? I, I, there's nothing else out there that I think you probably would rather want to do. I, there's nothing else I want to do. I want to show up and I want to serve the Lord. That's what I want to do, and I see there's a ministry of the Kohathites here, and I think there's some valuable lessons for us to learn, and uh, they're difficult lessons. And let me just give them to you. It's real simple. I call this, this is my only Dennis Knoll sermon. <laughs> it's just really simple, amen? Because usually when I, I, I know about you, you get in front, you're, you're looking at your message, and, you know, the verse is Jesus wept, and you have a 50-word point, Six subpoints and all the rest and all the illustrations, but this is really simple. But I want to show you this through the scriptures here tonight, and maybe try to set this thing up. I want to show you, first of all, in verse number seven, verse number seven, <clears throat> I want you to see that God gives some people a little bit of help. God gives some people just a little bit of help. And this might not mean a whole lot to you, and uh, the, more you, the more you get into this thing, it might mean an awful lot to you. Look at verse seven. The Bible says two wagons and four oxen. Pretty simple. Gershon got a little bit of help. Say, a little bit of help to do what? Just serve the Lord. Amen. Just to minister in the capacity that he was called to do. You find over there in verse 7, I believe it is, that he was called to do this. And so what happens? <clears throat> he has a job and God gives him just a little bit of help. Don't you like it when you get a little bit of help? Amen. Sometimes we're so stubborn and hard-headed, someone tries to give you help. You're, nope, nope, I got it. I've learned I'm, only, I'm not quite 50, almost there, but I'll just take a little bit of help. Amen. Why? I need it. I used to think I was tough, but now I need help. You say, what in the world did Gershon need the help for? Look at, uh, it, can I get you to go back to Numbers 4? I'm going to go 20 minutes, we're done here. Look at Numbers chapter 4. You find this in verses 24 to 26. I'm just trying to get you to see that God gives some people a little bit of help just so they can serve Him. All right, in verses 24 to 26, you know what? You know what Gershon needed to haul? He needed to haul some curtains. 
He had the curtain ministry. I thought it was funny. <laughs> Would you like the curtain ministry, men? Remember, these are men 30 years and older, right? What are you doing? I haul curtains. Oh, that's great. Curtains in verse 25, how about this? Badger skins in verse 25. Then you got some hangings in 25 and 26. Not like people, but you know, like, uh, I don't know this, I don't know this, like, hangings. You know, your country decor, or whatever it is that was unique and, and needed in the tabernacle. And finally, in verse 26, you got some cords. And I'm just saying, real simple tonight, in the Christian life, you're going to be faithful. Some of you are going to need a little bit of help. And God's going to give you just a little bit of help. I'm thankful for a little bit of help. Amen. Well, let's not stop there. Look at number two. God gives some people a lot of help. Verse 8. The Bible says in verse 8 that uh, <clears throat> you got a fellow named Marari here. Not Ferrari, but Marari. Uh, and he gets four wagons and eight oxen. That's a pretty good deal. He gets twice as much help. Oh, that's pretty exciting. Don't you like it when you get more? I do. I like it when I get a lot of help. Now, I don't know if this will minister to, to some of y'all that got it down, but I'm telling you what, after listening to the messages this morning, uh, I need a lot of help. Amen. And I learned something when uh, I think Brother I know was pray, uh, praying, that too, preaching, is that one of the reasons you go to the altar is because you're going to need help. Yeah. Amen. I always thought you just you went because you had to have it now. And I just figured out, I've just been, always been waiting too long to go to the altar. But I, aren't you glad that God gives some people a lot of help? Amen. He gave Marari a lot of help. That's a blessing. You say, what did, uh, uh, what did Marari need so much help with? Look at Numbers chapter 4. Just bounce right back there. <clears throat> this guy's got the tough guy ministry. He need, uh, look at verse 31 to 32. I'll, in uh, verse 31, he needs to uh, transport the boards of the tabernacle and the bars and the pillars, and the sockets. I don't know if they're metric or SAE, but probably both. Because there's just that one thing that just didn't fit. Maybe vice grips too. <clears throat> Verse 32, you've got more pillars, more sockets. You've got a bunch of pins. See that? Verse 32, cords and tools. So sometimes if the Lord were to open your eyes so you could see what your brother's dealing with, that's why he needs as much help as he does. Because he's at a place where he just... Bella needs help. And you're like, oh, that's right, preacher. You need some help. I'm, I'm not talking about like, I'm talking about you have got yourself in a position. Actually, Lord put you in a position, and you need a lot of help. And God gives some people just a little bit of help. And then God gives some people a lot of help. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? That he gives someone just a little, and then someone a lot more. Doesn't seem really fair, does it? Well, let me give you this one. He gives some people a little bit of help, some people a lot of help. But look at verse 9. He gives some people no help at all. The Bible says in verse 9, Kohath, he gave none. So why wouldn't they help him? Look at verse 9. They should bear upon their shoulders. Well, what did Kohath have to bear? Go back to Numbers 4. We're almost done with the flipping back and forth. And I'll give you a couple things and move on. <clears throat> verse 4 of Numbers chapter 4. They had to carry the most holy things. Now you got my attention. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I know it's not a pastoral world, but isn't that neat? I mean, isn't that good that you get to carry the most holy things? That's exciting. You ever stop and think preachers were what you would be doing if you weren't a preacher? Amen. But you get to carry the most holy things. <laughs> Look at verse uh, 5. They get to carry the ark of the testimony. Verse 6, the staves. Uh, verse 7, you got the table of showbread, the dishes, the spoons, the bowls, the, the bread, the golden candlestick, his lamps, his tongs, snuff dishes, 
and all the oil vessels thereof. That's a bunch of important stuff. Verse 9, uh, um, verse 11, the golden altar and its staves. Verse 12, all the instruments of ministry. Man, you are given the task of carrying all the instruments of ministry. And many times in the ministry you're going to be doing that, and you're going to look at that thing, and you're going, to, you're going to feel the weight of it, and you're going to be like, I got no help at all. I don't understand that. Not only that, but look at verse 12. You've got all the instruments of ministry. In verse 14, you've got the censers, the flesh hooks, shovels, basins, and all the vessels. You say, why do you name all that? Someone's keeping track of what you're doing. It's not just time filler. It's not just, hey, uh, this is when we get together, so I, I guess we'll, we'll get together and preach. I guess we'll get together and sing. I mean, the Lord is keeping track of all that, but it gets worse. As my friend says, cheer up. It gets worse. Not only do they not get any help, but it's like, it's almost like a slap in the face because now they have to bear it upon their shoulders. You ever stop and wonder just, Lord, what are you even doing? Because this don't make any sense at all. But yet He's told you to preach. He's told you to be faithful. And like Brother Kenning preached this morning... He told you to be faithful, and since the king did it, you're going to do it? I don't know if you see it that way, but I see man, some people, they get a little bit of help. I look at some folks, and they got a whole bunch of help. And sometimes, Christian preacher, you got the ministry of the Kohathites, and you got no help at all. It gets worse. Here's the thing. You had me at carrying the most holy things. You really did. Because I'm getting excited. Because most of the holy things, if I'm right, Brother Walker, were they not covered in pure gold? Now we're talking. But the thing I... If I'm reading my Bible right, that job of that Kohathite in Numbers chapter 4, he couldn't even go in there and pick that stuff up. He had to wait while the high priest came in and covered everything up. He couldn't even see what he was carrying. I mean, obviously he had a clue. Well, this kind of looks like a snuff dish. But he wasn't supposed to look at that stuff lest he die. You say, so what? A lot of things covered up in the ministry. No help. It don't seem to make a whole lot of sense. And not only that, if everything's covered in gold, that tells me everything is like four to five times heavier than if it was just a candlestick. Just an altar. You encase something with pure gold, man, you got some weight. Preachers, you know what I'm talking about? A little bit of weight. You get up to prepare, you get up to preach, you feel like the weight of the earth is on your shoulders. I'm not trying to get pity. I'm saying God gives some people a little bit of help and God gives some people a whole lot of help. And you're like, sure, it would be nice. You could get some help. And then sometimes you look at the ministry you're in and like, what in the fire are you doing, Lord? And he's like, i got to cover this thing up. Just wait. So they had to wait out there and covers everything up and then they got to bear it upon their shoulders. I don't know about you. I don't know how you read. You, you might be spiritual and read your Bible. Oh, that's right. Yeah, amen, amen. I'm like, that ain't fair. That ain't fair one bit. You know what my old man told me growing up? He said, life ain't fair. Right. That's right, brother. You have to understand that the Lord gives some people a little bit of help. The Lord will give some people a whole lot of help. And sometimes, some people seem to get no help at all. And you might be that one here that seems to be getting no help at all. But I'm telling you, there's something for you. There's something for you. Yeah. Here's the thing. You're looking at Gershon over here. He's got like the F-150 ministry. <laughs> Fold the curtains. <laughs> Pitch it in there. They don't even have dust on them. Then you got the F-350 ministry. They're loggers. <clears throat> All right. 
Guys, this is what we're going to do. On three, break the tabernacle down as fast as you can, throw it in the truck, and we're out of here. Break. Yes! And they all get together, and they're all just sweating, sweating, stuff is flying, and spit, and smells that are interesting. Amen? And all this stuff, all this work is done. And you know what? Kohath's going, oh, that's nice. Look at that. Look what they got. Their bills are paid. They got a new ride. Come on, I ain't the only one thinking this stuff. Y'all are out of your mind if you think I'm the only guy here thinking that stuff. They got their bills paid. They got a new ride. And you're holding curtains. Real spiritual, guys. So here what you do. You can't even see what you're carrying. You got two sticks going through that thing. And you know what you do? <clears throat> you start getting bitter. And you squat under that load. And someone says, careful. You're like, Shut up. I know what I'm doing. I've only done this for 39 and a half years. And you get under that thing and you know you got the right form. Up you go. And every step you're feeling the weight. And every step you're feeling it. And man, you get about a mile out there and like, rest area, are you kidding me? We just got going. They're hopping out of the truck like, woohoo, time to get a Red Bull or something. And you're like, no, we ain't stopping. Here's the thing that I think the Kohathites probably hated the most. If you look at your Bible in Numbers chapter, they are stuck in the middle of that entire assembly. You say, so what? Everything's covered up. They can't see. They're in the middle of it all. you got some choices right about here. Listen, there's going to come a time and point in your ministry where you're going to look out there at Brother Gershon or Brother Marari and think that they got it a lot easier. You're going to look what you're doing and you're going to feel the weight and you're going to feel the burden of everything that's crashing down around you and you can't seem to keep it together. And you're in the middle of everything and that fog begins to set in. And you're like, Lord, would you just give me some help? Can I tell you, all those three, the Lord called each one of them to that position. He called each one. He called the Gershonites to do the work of Gershon. You might be a Christian here today that has to have a lot of help to keep going. I don't know. You say, not me, not me, preacher. I'm a pretty simple man. Well, maybe the Lord knows that if you don't have a brand new phone every year, $700 watch in your arm every year, 65 subscriptions that automatically renew themselves that you won't keep serving the Lord. Might be a little bit overkill on the subscriptions, but you, you know what I mean. You might be Gershon that maybe all you need is just a little bit of help. And so the Lord gives you a little bit of help because He knows that's exactly what you need. And you might be here tonight, you might be under the ministry of the Kohathites, and you might be that individual that needs no help at all. But God gave you some big shoulders. And with them shoulders and His grace, you're going to carry whatever He wants you to, however far He wants you, and you're going to get the job done. Can I tell you, you got some choices here tonight. Can I tell you the first choice you got is you can choose to be bitter about it. You can choose to be an ornery Christian. And that's what Korah did in number 16. He was a Kohathite. Not only did he choose bitterness instead of just faithfulness, but he died bitter. And let me tell you what, that root was so deep, and by the time it came out in the open, he took 250 men down with him. Just like that. It was so deep, he'd been bitter for so long, he had nobody around him to say, hey, get your head out of the sand. Hey, Midian's talking to you. You better stop it. You better get a hold of it. And the next thing you know, you're bitter. And next thing you know, you're standing against God's man, which means you're really standing against God himself. Amen. You can choose to be bitter. I say number two, I'm almost done here. Not only can you choose bitterness, but you can choose what I call plan B. That's orchestration. You know, you're not getting the help you need, so now you're just going to force it. 
orchestration. Some of you are great at conducting symphonies. Okay, just me. But that's where you begin to orchestrate things that God really doesn't want you to be a part of. You just it, Things just aren't going fast enough for you. And there's just not enough recognition in that thing. I'm telling you, I really think I need to be here. But the Lord's like, no, I need you to be here, grunting it out, sweating it out, bearing underneath your shoulders. And you're like, Lord, I, 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 Marari is my tribe. So like David in 2 Samuel chapter 6, what you do, you force others to help you. And what David did is he was the king, right? And he just grabbed a cart. He just grabbed a wagon. Grabbed a couple oxen, right? That didn't belong to what was going on. He orchestrated the help. I know he was a man after God's own heart. But he orchestrated the help and he forced it and he created plan B. And because he had plan B, he sacrificed an innocent man on the altar of his own ego because he wanted to go faster. Let me give you the last one here. You can choose bitterness. You can choose plan B. That's orchestration. Or you can go ahead and believe God. That's obedience. Believe God and bear it upon your shoulders. Just thank God that he put you in the ministry. You know the verse Job chapter 13 verse 15. The Bible says, though he slay me yet, will I trust him. You see the reality and one feller says perception is reality. It really is. People might not think you're going through something, but if you're going through it, it is reality. And when you get into whatever it is you're in, you're trying to serve the Lord and do the best you can and everything begins to fall out, the bottom drops out, and you're doing the best you can to live for him and serve him. You're going to start looking around if you're not careful. And you're going to say, uh huh, there's Gershon. I bet you if I had a little bit of help, I could do what he's doing. I bet you if I had the help that Merari had, I could go far. But no, I'm here. I'm, I'm just a Kohathite. And you see that thing typified throughout the Bible. You see in Acts chapter 20, you see Paul ready to get shipwrecked there. And the first ones to go, they're like the Kohathites. They're the swimmers. Off the boat they go. They don't need any help. That's what you are, preacher. You're a swimmer. You don't need help. God said, get it. And you go after it. And then the next piece you got there, you got the Merarites, some broken pieces of the ship. That's a lot of help, right? And then you got your boards. That thing's all throughout the Bible there. But the reality of serving God faithfully many times is that you're going to look around if you're not careful and see that God's giving some people a little, God giving some people a lot, and you're going to think God gives some people nothing at all, but what He's really giving you is the grace of God and a set of big shoulders. That's good preaching. When was the last time, and I'm done, when was the last time you thanked the Lord for a little? When was the last time you thanked the Lord for a lot? When was the last time you thanked the Lord and you just grunting it out. 